We're at the London Soccer Dome for Pioneers Day. Pioneers Day. I'd like to welcome you all to Pioneers Day 150. Um, today's event is about celebrating the FA's contribution to grassroots football. We're just doing media courses and learning different types of ways we can get into football. Not necessarily on the pitch, but like the staff and coaching and radio. Remember, who, when, where, why, what? The interviewing was really interesting. We learned how professionals do it and how to get along with the interviewee and how to like interact with them so that it makes it interesting and lively. Um, we also learned how to commentate. What's the touch? What's the goal? Take a look at that. I am so proud right now. We have to learn about backing history and put enthusiasm so that people will enjoy the match just as much as we do. So days like today are so good for the young people just to see that there are jobs out there for them. It doesn't have to be in sports broadcasting, it might be as a referee, it might be in coaching. But there, there are jobs out there and it's up to sort of us and the London FA. It's brilliant that they're putting this on for them today to show them that there is stuff out there that they can get involved in. I'm a referee myself and I'm also a referee for the day. Uh, the National Council is 12 young referees nationwide and we aim to get out there and introduce refereeing to young people and the opportunities that it can bring. We've done a bit of looking around the skills and attributes of a referee which includes communication, professionalism, people management skills which are all really important um, especially as they're looking at their future careers um, and we've then put that into refereeing again. So some of them have acted as referees and some of them have acted as Assistant I like Pioneer Day because it showed me different aspects of football that I didn't even know about like blind football and it showed me other skills that I wouldn't otherwise know like interviewing, how to conduct yourself, um, how to commentate and it's actually been quite good. It's important to reach out to young people and um, let them know what opportunities there are across the game. Um, I'm working in a number of different areas in football, um, primarily broadcasting and um, for me it's given me a fantastic life and an opportunity to work in basically what was a hobby initially where I wanted to become a footballer but sadly wasn't good enough. So um, that's why I'm here. Um, I've delivered a talk this morning um, about my career progression that involved a number of different stages, involved volunteering. Because of the volunteering I've done I was able to carry the Olympic torch last year which is incredible, thanks to Darren for nominating me. I've been up to St George's Park on national camps. I've just been able to do so much volunteering at Champions League festivals, things like that. So the programme's really worthwhile getting involved with, you know, people come from different backgrounds, people have different routes into sport, and I think days like this really encourage people to look at football from a, like, a wider perspective. It made me more interested in, um, in media, in football. I take more of a notice now when I'm watching football. And all these youngsters that we have out here, um, obviously they're getting to that point where they are thinking about what they're going to do. They all want to be football players. But only a handful of football players make it. But my message today and what I'm going to be speaking to all the youngsters about is having a life after football. I now have my own brand, Boateng Believe and Achieve, which is if you believe in anything, make sure you do everything in your power to achieve it. I'm happy I came here today because we got to make new friends and we met Lassie Crystal Palace as well. Hi, my name is Janet Lassie. I play for Crystal Palace in the English Premier League and I'm here to basically talk about my career and how I've made it in football and what I've done in football so far. I like to do a lot of things like this, you know, because when I was that age I didn't have no one of my kind of calibre um, come into school where I can get the chance to meet them, get the chance to talk to them, get the chance to interview them, you know, and get a chance to even get a picture of any kind of stars. So for me, it's, it's an honour doing this, you know, I feel good, you know, I feel like I'm giving something back.
When I was 26, I nearly died from a virus that nobody quite knows what it was. And I didn't die, but I was left completely paralysed. Um, my parents, I had to move 300 miles to home, and my parents took care of me for years. So I'm here today just to be a visible example of wellness. You know, if I was having known where my life was going to take me, if I'd come here at the age of 15, heard someone else at the age of 33 say, you know what, I nearly died, I was disabled, but now I'm all right. I would have already had hope and we have to be visible examples of hope. We have to, you cannot buy hope but you can give it away for free and you can do that so easily. So we can give each other hope in careers, we can give each other hope in health, we can give each other hope in life because people need people and that's why I get so excited, that's why I'm an ambassador for Kick It Out, that's why I'm an ambassador for a few different Olympic legacy projects. So I'm here today just to show people that there are so many avenues to pursue, there are so many ways that you can work and there are so many ways that you can achieve your dream, even if you're like me and never kicked a football in your life. It's only right that, especially with youngsters today um, and what the day is about, that um, Kick It Out show their support for what London FA are doing. I'm, I'm fortunate enough also to be the father of a professional football player. Well, he's Andros Townsend, who's playing at Tottenham at the moment, um, and he's making a big impression. And I suppose that there's a pathway that I've also had to lead with him as well, um, in terms of kind of you know helping support and managing his career, which the family have done. Kids of our future really, um, my past experiences, what it takes to, to achieve your dream and put that effort and hard work into to wanting to accomplish something and just myself and the other panellists that were here just speaking and letting them know bits and pieces of uh, the journeys and the life trials that we've been through in getting where, we, where we've got to today. And it's just not all been easy work, it's been hard work and just explaining that it's the hard work that you put in to, to get to you want to get to. I like the interview and part of the football life. An excellent opportunity for them to develop their knowledge and understanding of the media and the world of um, sport. A good day overall, really. I really enjoyed it. I think other people will enjoy it too. Do you wish you had one of these when you were in school? Because I know I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Might not be a PE teacher now. You might have been a sports journalist because yeah. this looks really good. I think we'd be really good actually. I think we'd be quite good. <laughs> I'm on Football Futures. I've been blogging um, about everything I've done, trying to help promote the game through setting up a newsletter with the London FA Youth Council. And so I was recognised for that recently by the FA and I've won a national award for promoting the game. Sporting Equals are here today to support the London FA's Pioneers Day. And the message, which is work hard, give it your all, be creative and be confident. But before I go, let's give Darren a round of applause.